Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast, where we help you understand and leverage your intellectual property. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from the success and failures of others and teach you how to win at the game of intellectual property. I always start with a disclaimer. The information provided on this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I am not providing legal advice, and nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client relationship. We welcome you forming an attorney-client relationship, but that has to be done with a one-on-one consultation. So go ahead and give us a call if that's what you want. But right now, we're just going to go on with a podcast. Um, This week, we're talking about strong utility patents, and this is episode 11, Preventing Patent Profanity in Your Patent. So have you ever played the game of Taboo? It's a game where that, well, every skilled patent attorney plays this game every day to avoid patent profanity. Having the wrong language in a patent can cost companies millions of dollars. If your patent has certain words, They might severely limit the scope of the claims. As you may have heard in the episodes so far, the claims are critical. They are the rights that you are getting with your patent. If your claims fail, the patents fail. And so the written description is the backbone of a patent application, and it needs to support the claims. Um, but it can also actually hurt the claims. So what can happen is um, if there are things in your written description that say this, for the invention to work, this has to be present. If that's not in your claims, well, they're going to say, well, we're going to treat it as if it's in your claims, narrowing your claims down. And so... It's kind of like the uh, foundation of a building, your your specification. If that doesn't support the what's above it, the whole thing could collapse. So the uh, your specification is very important, and that's where patent uh, profanity is is where it shows up. Uh, but actually, there's other places. I'll discuss that in just a minute. So um, some of the things that you want to make sure, of course, you need to support the the patent. Um, you want to discuss, you're required to disclose the best method that you know of to make and use the invention in your specification. And that's at the time of filing. If you figure out a better way after you file, that's you don't you don't get to and you don't have to uh, put that in the patent application you you can't actually put new ideas into a patent application after it's been filed you need a new uh patent application to do that um and we can discuss that later so um patent profanity refers to the use of um terms that say that the patent or the the invention has to be a certain way. So an example is that, uh, so T-Mobile, they avoided uh, a finding of patent infringement because the competitor's patent that they were being sued for listed something in the specification that was a, quote, very important feature in their patent. So even though that wasn't in the claims, um, that was a feature that T-Mobile did not have in in their product. And therefore they said, well, if they don't have it and it's a very important feature, then you don't infringe. Basically, they wrote that into the claims, adding an additional limitation. As I've said multiple times, um, if if your patent claims have like five limitations, then someone has to infringe each of those five. Now, what the court did here, and they'll do this, is they said, oh, there's a sixth here. We, we have to 
we have to find six things because the specification says there's another one. And since they didn't find that sixth one, they said, you don't infringe. Another example is uh, Microsoft. They, they want a patent case against research corporation. Um, they focused on the word, the present invention and objects of the invention. So the word invention, as I mentioned before, it refers to what's in the patent claims. It is a technical term and should not be used in the patent really at all. And that sounds crazy that you're, you're, this is what you're doing. You're disclosing your invention and you're telling the world and patent office, this is my invention, but you can't use the words, the invention without risking uh, later interpretation of, well, this is what the invention is and your claims didn't claim that. So we're going to add limitations into your claim. Um, so that's, uh, and as time goes on, these, these different cases come up and we add these things to our list of, of patent profanity. Um, we use a system to make sure that we don't have any of that in our patent applications when we file them. So if you like what you hear in this podcast, make sure you subscribe. And if you have questions about your own patents, make sure you follow the links that are available to schedule a consultation with us. Um, so it's not just what is in the patent, but the entire patent file can be used against the patent. So the patent file is everything that is sent to the patent office. Uh, patent files can be from 100 pages to 1,000 pages or more. Every time the patent office rejects it, and 90% of patent applications are rejected at least once, um, they, they send a rejection and the attorney then write, has to, in writing, respond, uh, make arguments, and discuss what why the patent should be granted. In those communications, if there are terms like, um, so in a case with Mylan Pharmaceuticals, um, they found in that patent file at the patent office, the terms key feature and critical feature in what the patent attorney had written to the patent office. And so those features were then now written into the patent claims. And what can happen is um, the, the attorney may have been working to, to do one set of claims and then kind of hit a, hit a brick wall there. And so they moved to a different set of claims and different focus on the, on the patent and got the patent allowed. But the language from the first set of claims is still in that patent file. And, so then that was used against them. There was another case where the term necessarily in that patent file, not in the patent itself, but in that patent file. And um, when I first started practicing patent law, we would have to order a patent file from the patent office. Um, you know, a hundred or a thousand pages we'd have to pay for each page. Um, it was a huge expense. Now you can download it. Uh, if a patent is issued, you can go onto the patent office and just download the entire file and you can just have it. So it's, it's so much easier to check. And these are some of the things, if you're accused of patent infringement, these are some of the things you would want to look at to see if these weaknesses are in the patent. It might help you negotiate without going to court um, either a, a settlement that works better or even to get them to go away and and stop bothering you um, a lot of people learn a new language by living in a country and they learn the profanity first um, so it's it's good for you to identify the profanity in patents um, so that we encourage you when your patent attorney drafts your patent application you should read through it if the words invention are in there, if it says something is required or extremely important or necessary, um, 
Those are things you do not want in your patent. The, the invention is what is claimed, and that can change before the, the, the patent gets issued. So when you file the patent application, you actually don't know what the legal term of the invention is going to cover. And so you don't want to mention the invention anywhere in your patent. So, and um, what we have is we actually have software that uh, reviews and we have a list of patent profanity terms that it will highlight. Now, of course, we're very used to getting those out. And um, if the software, you know, if, if we make the mistake we, we've, or if there's a new term that is now considered patent profanity and the system lets us know about that, we're going to get used to making sure we take that out. Um, so I encourage you to find out if your patent attorney has a system, not just that they're re relying on your brain or their brain. Uh, brains make mistakes. Systems make a lot less mistakes. Um, and so we offer a free review of your patent. And if you've got a patent and you have concerns about it, you can talk with me, Wayne Carroll, I'm a patent attorney, to discuss your patent application or your issued patent. And we can help you ensure that it has success. Um, our next episode covers avoiding shooting your patent in the foot with prior art declarations. Um, and just as a quick recap, um, this week so far we've covered the, uh, the claims, which are the, the heart of the patent. Those are the legal rights, the, the drawings and how the drawings have to support the claims, the, um, your specification and patent profanity in the specification so that you don't shoot yourself in the foot with, with terms that then start adding limitations to your claims that you don't want there. And then uh, next up, we're going to talk about the, the background section and pri prior art.